We'll bring this meeting of the New Gloucester City Council to order, please. If I may have a call to order. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilman Chammy. Councilwoman Wright. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Here. Seven members present. And the invocations tonight will be by Chief Trustee. Father Lord, we thank you for the day and the beautiful weather you've blessed us with. Please be in this meeting tonight. Let that perfect will be done. Bless our first responders, our troops, and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, justice for all. <clears throat> and the action on the minutes are slated for the next meeting. Gotcha. Communications. I believe, you, Mrs. Uh, Berner, you have a letter there in front of you from Jim Leasley. If you will please read that. I have two. Actually. You have two? Yes. Okay. I can read them both. You have three. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. I have three. You have three? Yes. Good. I will go with this one first. Um, it says, Council, I hope this email finds you well. I heard the discussion of having chickens in town is back. As someone who has dealt with chickens my whole life and has also lived in town, I'd like to offer my concerns with owning chickens. Risk of disease. I'm concerned with disposing the waste properly. In order for a healthy hen to thrive, you need at least two. Hens, hens waste carry disease. I'm concerned yards in town cannot handle all the droppings from even two hens. Is there a place where the waste can be disposed of properly? Attraction of wildlife. I keep a very tidy chicken coop and chicken run. Our hens get fresh food daily and doesn't sit more than a day. I still have rats. I find after it rains, the rats will dig tunnels and wait till it's safe to eat the chicken food. Where there's chicken food, there's mice and rats. The hens themselves will attract predator wildlife such as foxes, coyotes, and raccoons. Their eggs will also attract rodents and snakes if not gathered quickly. Abandonment of chickens. Sometimes having an animal seems like a good idea and then later regret. If someone decides to abandon chickens, is there an animal shelter where they can go? What would the city do with the chickens that people just let loose? Purchasing poultry. Ideally, citizens will want hens, roosters will want hens. Roosters offer no eggs and are noisy. When purchased at most sto stores, you must purchase at least four. Even when you buy pre-sexed birds, there is no guarantee that you will get only hens. What will the citizens do with the unwanted roosters? We have methods in the country that would not work in town. I see potential for a wandering rooster issue. The smell. I tidy chicken coop smells. I tidy chicken coop smells bad when it rains. There's no getting around it. Thank you for your time. Sincere, sincerely, Aaron Lighty. That was one. Um, I have Mayor Council of New Carlisle. My name is Roy Kegley. I own Abe's Hidden Treasures located at 100 East Jefferson Street and Troy and Good Old Lumber Company located at 311 Ohio Avenue, both here in New Carlisle. Unfortunately, I am not able to make tonight's council meeting and have asked Vice Mayor Eggleston to read into this public record, read this into public record for me concerning council voting to allow chickens in the city. As a business owner in New Carlisle, I would encourage the council to not allow chickens inside the city of New Carlisle. I believe that chickens belong on a farm or out in the country. Allowing chickens in the city will do nothing but encourage stray dogs and cats to attack the chickens as well as bring other wildlife into the city, such as coyotes, more raccoons and skunks, just to name a few. I personally live approximately four miles outside of the city, but unfortunately I see firsthand what wildlife does to my neighbor's chickens. They now trap raccoons and kill them on a regular basis since the raccoons will get into the chicken coop and kill and mangle the chickens. It is also nothing to see coyotes or here in the area searching for a way to get at them as well. 
This does not include the animals that will be after the eggs, such as snakes, skunks, and such. I urge council to vote no on allowing chickens in the city. We do not need to bring in the country wildlife into the city more than it must be already. Allowing chickens inside the city will create more problems when we have coyotes and such roaming the city streets looking for chickens and other food sources. Large hawks will be coming after our cats and small dogs as they look for chickens. Country life belongs in the country. Please vote no on allowing chickens inside the city limits. Roy Kigley. And the last one. Members of City Council, I am writing in regards to proposed ordinance 2024-25, which is scheduled to be discussed and action taken up this evening. First, I apologize for not being able to present my discussion on this matter in person. However, a prior commitment precludes me from attending. As you are aware, Ordinance 2024-25 is being presented to allow the keeping of chickens at residential properties within the city limits. I am requesting that you unanimously deny this request. You should know that I am not anti-chicken, nor am I anti-livestock. In fact, I am exactly the opposite. As background information, I am a 1974 graduate of The Ohio State University with a bachelor's degree in agricultural education. I raised livestock from the time that I was eight years old until I graduated from college. I taught vocational agricultural and agriculture and I worked in a butcher shop for several years. Given this experience, I, I am well versed in the field of agricultural in general as well as animal husbandry specifically. I would like to go on record as saying that there are many reasons why farm animals are banned from being raised within city limits throughout the country, including the city of New Carlisle. The overwhelming reasons is that of the health and welfare of its citizens. Farm animals, by nature, are notorious carriers of pathogens and diseases, many of which can readily be transmitted to humans. Chickens, as well as other poultry, by nature, are extremely susceptible to being the transmitters of disease, as they are typically in contact with the ground, scratching for food, insects, etc., and continually coming in contact with earthborne pathogens, germs, and disease. There are reasons why there are specific guidelines and regulations for the safe handling of eggs and meat, as well as the addition of antibiotics in poultry feeds. Unfortunately, many backyard farmers are unaware of these issues and unknowingly contribute to the spread of disease. In addition to the above, an inner city is no place to have to deal with the most difficult part of raising livestock, the handling of waste, manure. Aside from the obvious problem, the aroma, especially during the heat of summer months, poultry waste is highly toxic petri dish of pathogens, a disease which can easily be transmitted to household pets, squirrels, rabbits, or any other ground animal. And the addition of backyard poultry will be a beacon tempting preying animals such as fox, coyote, and all the ready nuisance of roaming dogs. To be honest, I am amazed that this ordinance is being considered at all. It is a well-known fact that across the country, as well as right here in Ohio, millions of chickens are again being slaughtered due to the spread of avian influenza, bird flu. This rapidly spreading deadly disease <coughs> is being spread by infected migrating birds by simply dropping feces or saliva on two or on the ground where open air poultry are. And now we find that dairy cattle have been and are still being infected with the bird flu, even to the point of infiltrating their milk. And most recently, a dairy farm worker was found to be infected with avian influenza. With this disease in mind, another concern that I have is in regards to our close proximity to one of the premier businesses in the area, Bowman and Landis Turkeys. This fourth generation family business has raised, raised free range turkeys since 1948. At peak, they will have an excess of 50,000 antibiotic free turkeys in open pasture. They are approximately three and a half miles from us by road, approximately two miles by air. It is not out of the realm of possibility that avian influenza infested birds attracted to our local backyard chickens 
and their open feeders could also migrate and infect the open air pasture raised turkeys there. This would be devastating. In summary, I am 100% against Ordinance 2024-25. We should not allow the raising of chickens or any other farm animal within the city limits of New Carlisle. Not now or ever. I am therefore asking you to reject this ordinance. Respectfully, Jim Lethley. As you have heard, those were the communications that we have gotten in regards to the ordinance. We will visit this again shortly in the ordinance section and we'll continue with the agenda. With that, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of public. I'd like to share to you, uh, with you the city manager report. So um, we have the department the report planning, zoning, and mayor's court. Should council have any questions on that, please advise me, and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Um, under informational items, uh, we had this at the last city council meeting too, but it's such a big, important program. I did want to go ahead and put it back in the city manager report. Um, Clark County is doing a Lead Safe Ohio program, so if your house was built prior to 1978 and you have got some lead in your paint doorways, you can actually apply for to get up to $50,000 in free money to get that abated. So information will be on our website. So please, if you know of anyone who has those issues, there are income limits to that, please pass the information along. But again, we wanted to revisit that just because it was a great program. Um, on June 15th, starting at 10 o'clock at the Farmer's Market, Council will have another uh, Council uh, uh, Pizza and Donuts, essentially, with City Council. So, Council, I, I will stop and get some Bill's Donuts. Do you want to just do the dominoes like we did last time and just kind of filter those in? So that is set up for the 15th. Um, I'm assuming someone has secured a booth for the Farmer's Market. That's already been done. Great. So I'll show up with the Bill's Donuts and then can work on getting some pizzas around noon. Uh, but another good event, tie that into the farmer's market, um, please come visit your council members. Um, Habitat for Humanity, Clark County Land Bank Homes have a little bit of an update on that. So we know Habitat for Humanity has built their two new homes and Clark County Land Bank is responsible to build another two. Um, Clark County Land Bank did put those builds out to bid and they came back astronomically high, too high for them to do both projects to be honest with you. Um, so what I did is got um, the Ethan Harris, who is over the Clark County Land Bank, got him in connection with Paul Metzger, who is um, from Arbor Homes, and that is one of the developers that is building a development here in town. And they will still have to go through the bidding process, but it's looking like they'll be able to, um, Arbor Homes will be able to build a house for Clark County Land Bank at a reasonable price. Um, now what that means is the houses that were originally set off to planning board are a little bit different. Um, so um, there were variances of, approved for that lot. So as long as they stay within those variances, they are good to go. But the house is going to be a much better house than what it was before, just because it is one of the Arbor Homes houses they are building. So definitely not going to look like the other two by a long shot. I uh, still don't have any update on that fourth house build yet. As soon as I get that, I will pass it on to City Council. Um, policy items council's working on that boards and commission handbook i know you guys did not get to that last time but it is so close to being done so i just wanted to put that back on your guys's uh, radar to let you know we have a little bit left to do with that it's about done so any kind of guidance on that would be greatly appreciated charter review through preamble sorry was not be able to make that meeting um, i actually had plans i forgot about so my apologies on that um, we are waiting for the minutes to get done and then Jake's going to summarize everything. We'll get those out to council. Just make sure you guys are on the same page with what you all had discussed. Um, disaster recovery handbook, still working on that. Um, it's relatively small. I got some finishing touches to put it on, um, but I will have that out to council for their review here shortly. And the uh, last thing on there is citizen of the year. We did design uh, that award a few years back. So any guidance on that next step would be greatly appreciated as well from council. We don't need uh, guidance on that tonight. Just wanted to let you guys know that is still on our radar. <coughs> Upcoming legislations, bonding of certain city employees. We have Monroe TIF legislation round one. We're gonna starting those letter notifications, I think in the next two or three weeks. Um, so as soon as that ordinance is ready to come to council, um, it'll be the same process we did with the R. Horton development. It has to be introduced and it has to sit for quite some time and then you guys have to vote on it, then it has to set to become effective for quite some time. But it's gonna be pretty much the same exactly uh, format, uh, the pr last one we did just with different names and different numbers. Um, tax budget, that's coming up real soon. We got our first read June 17th. 
July 1st will be uh, second read and voting, and it must be adopted by July 15th. And what that does is it says to the county auditor, this is how much we are expecting from our levies and the millage options that we have out there. So really doesn't have anything to do with our overall ending balances. All that's going to change. It's just really for us to certify how much we come in from property taxes and uh, levies, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I do have some, one thing under additional uh, topic, discussion topics. Uh, we did get word of mosquito trapping by Clark County Community Health District. They do that for us every single year. Uh, they usually do that around mid-June. This year they're going to start about a week early just because the weather is pertinent uh, for them to do so. Um, Mayor Cook and Vice Mayor Eggleston, um, have anyone given an update on the council dias to the group? Um, were you getting the... We got no well, estimates back. I didn't. I don't know. Did you get them? So unfortunately, um, Mr. Johnson has decided not to go forward with the project. He felt as though from the get-go no one was on the same page. And then what was being asked of him with the final price was somewhat unrealistic. So unfortunately, he's not going to be able to help us. Um, so maybe the committee can start from scratch and then maybe find someone else to do. But unfortunately, Mr. Johnson will not be working with the city. Okay. Um, so that is all I have for my uh, manager report. I do have a PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to walk up and go to that side of the room. Bear with us. This is the first time we've done it here. Is it over there? I need my report. No, it isn't. Okay. All right, so the, it's going to be against this wall, so some council members may have to flip. So this is called Year of the People, and I think once we get into this, it'll all make sense. We're so excited to, to announce this to everyone. First off, let me say it's good to see some familiar faces in the crowd. Glad to see that we're all here participating in our local government. That's exactly why I want to become a city manager for a small city. It's just exactly for this reason. And also to the people on YouTube, thank you for tuning in. So this is called what we're going to call the Year of the People. And just, so, just in case you do not know who I am, my name is Randy Bridge. I am your city manager. I have been the city manager here since 2015. In 2012, I was hired as a planning director. And as a city manager, I am responsible for day-to-day -day operations. So basically, if it falls under that day-to-day, -day, it is my responsibility to make sure it runs, oper uh, runs smoothly and operates great. I do not do this alone. We have 20-plus full-time staff with the addition of a 50-plus part-time staff, and that goes up and down depending on what kind of year it is. This particular PowerPoint presentation was designed and developed by my new executive assistant. Her name is April Lowry. She has done some great work. A lot of this stuff you're going to see here, pretty much all of it has been April Lowry's work. So it was a fantastic hire for us, and she's going to do some great things for our city. So without further ado, let's just get into it. Um, so right now, to really understand how we can appreciate our projects over here, we have to understand our general fund history. So in 2015, we ended with 169000 we see through the years how that has ended up to $2.8 million today. That is solely due to our residents passing that additional 0.5% income tax back in 2015 to help pay for our police. But because of that, it has led to the improvements that we have been able to do. Most namely, this is what we're very proud of, record repace of road repairs. We have fixed roads in this city faster than any other administration has before in the past. And that is a combination of complete shaven paves, I mean, I'm sorry, shaven paves, or complete redo. Um, our assistant city manager, his name is Howard Kitko, he does an excellent job of, of securing money to get this stuff done. We have done a lot of park enhancements. You can look out this window right here, we can see the playground equipment. Carlisle Park right now is undergoing a massive, uh, we just got done doing a basketball court. That uh, is also going to be improved uh, as we continue on. So we're in Willowood Park, we'll be getting new uh, playground equipment, uh, should council approve that supplemental tonight. So we've done a really good job of improving. City beautification, our biggest and most interacted Facebook post is usually yearly when we put the picture of the hanging baskets downtown. It, it just gets a lot of attention. Little things like that go a long way. Our downtown right now is beautiful. We have the newly paved street, we have military banners up, we have the American flags up, and the flower pots. That is awesome small town parents, and we love that. Touch my gov, we need to promote this a little bit better. We're doing a good job, but it's just not getting where we need to be. So again, let's take this moment to promote it. Touch my gov, please go to our website, click on that. You can sign up, you can get, you can 
text it pothole and it'll give you an information how do you contact your, your service director to fix a pothole. Um, city council meetings, it gives you the next day to the city council meeting. So it's a very responsive actual platform that we, we got and we love it. Just We need the citizens to interact with more. And I think over time that'll come. It's a relatively new program. I think in the past <coughs> year we, we've got it. Another big hit, but actually simple, <coughs> downtown speaker product, the speakers. So if you're downtown, you're shopping, you hear that Christmas music, we hear <coughs> in the background, that is, actually we got that for COVID dollars. Big hit, we got a lot of compliments on that. I know a lot of people use it when they do the festivals and stuff uh, downtown. So we're always willing to share it, but just a great, great, great addition to our downtown. And speaking of our downtown, I, I communicate this a lot with people who don't live in New Carlisle. We need to be very thankful and very respectful of our downtown. It's full, it's got plenty of walkability to it. We're gonna enhance that down the road with hopefully getting a crosswalk up by the new uh, player's court, but it's full. And you go to a lot of downtowns that are our size, and it's a ghost town and it's completely opposite here. So please take a moment, visit your downtown, say thank you for bringing your business here, we appreciate it. Increased number of studies is another thing that we've been able to do with this. Because of that 0.5% increase, that's now fund studies, and we contract out with Clark County to do that, we've been able to go from two deputies to three to four, all the way up to six. When we get that six, we're pretty much gonna have 24 hour coverage. So that's also been a great way to show the appreciation and the value of that 0.5% income tax that you all approved. That's exactly what that money is for. So again, just wanted to re reiterate where we've come from to where we are at now. I really appreciate these programs. Hey Randy, I have a question on um, your layout there. Is, is, there, is it supposed to be across, like from the project to here to the, I don't, I don't understand how No, that. there are columns that you read down. So you're just listing some sample projects, for example. It's just complimenting the stuff. So and then projects. And the general one says that the total of your general fund was this much in that year. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Any other questions before I continue on? So you're just giving a, a sample of improvements. They're not related to the year, right? Exactly. So you have your heading here. Read down. Your heading here. Read down. And your heading here read down. These are not correlated with this, they're just examples. Thank you. Yes, yeah, no problem. So let's get into it. So the first thing we were, we're gonna start doing is movie night. So this is something that's been relatively so simple to get up and going, but gonna have a lot of lasting impacts. Um, so basically we have this nice little amphitheater out here. We just got power washed. So we have already ordered the screen. It is a 24 foot inflatable, it's massive. Uh, this is a projector we got to use for movie nights and other presentations as well. Uh, but this is going to be a great thing. This is going to be a partnership with our new Carlisle Library. Uh, excited to get that started. Uh, the first one is actually going to be at on June 29th, and that's going to be after our fireworks show. We're going to show the movie Sandlot at Haddock's Field. So we're going to start promoting that uh, tomorrow. We wanted to present that to everyone first before we saw it. Lots of feedback so far on this. I think what we have, what I've talked to uh, people about, they love it. They love the fact that they can stick around and hang out with their kids after the fact and give just a little bit more to be in at the fireworks show than just a fireworks show in need. So this again will be a partnership with the library. The library um, will be giving out free popcorn and we're also going to be using their license, movie licenses because you can't just show a movie in the public without paying that fee. So you got to be part of that fee structure. So we'll actually pay the fee we're just going to use their name and get that license. Again, they are going to provide free popcorn and activity for each movie. Um, we're also going to try to explore the option of asking Kona Ice or other food truck to be with us. This particular project here, including the projector and the movie screen, is about $5,000 right now, which is really not a lot of money because this projector will last a long time and also will that movie of the, uh, yeah, the projector that we have purchased as well. So we are very excited about this. So now we have three days tentatively planned, uh, 29th, July 13th, and August 17th. We don't have any of those movies set for July 13th and 17th yet, but they're going to be family friendly of course and then we are probably keep a, maybe one or two dates open for additional movie throughout the season depending on how it goes and um yeah so definitely look forward to further promoting this and then to getting the word out about the additional on the 13th and the 17th another thing we've got all the time is block to knock no registry for some reason the city of new carlisle we just get inundated with peppers we all know this if you live in new carlisle at some point in time your house is probably been knocked on for someone trying to sell you a or a service. Uh, we get constant complaints on that, whether they're being rude, whether they, what they won't leave when I come to them. So we found a solution to this and it's called a no-knock registry. So basically how that would work is it's going to protect the citizens and the peddlers themselves. 
and we want them to know the citizens you didn't want you don't have to open your door for a salesman the most effective way is for yourself to get a no soliciting thing to put on your door so that's definitely a way to do that but this is actually going to be given out with every feather permit so once they come they get that permit we do a background check on that business to make sure they don't have any other bad complaints on them we issue that permit then they're going to get a copy of this and they should not knock on your door um, so again how that's going to work is we're going to receive notification uh, that you want to put on it and then we once we will keep it on we'll keep it on until december 31st or the fifth full calendar day for the date that's address submitted so we will have to have you redo it every year but we also know that people come and go out of their houses as well so that's pretty much the reason why we want people to come back and re re register but so this is going to be a great program we look forward to getting that implemented but this is another big thing that we've had a lot of com uh, questions on and that is senior citizen senior citizen registry so um, me and April kind of look at many programs from other cities, um, how they do it. Some are really extensive, some are not. So we wanted to keep ours local. So basically what this is going to do is we're going to allow us to implement a program to help uh, to engage our citizens. And it's basically going to foster those community needs. Sometimes they don't know how to communicate with modern technology. Sometimes they're intimidated to speak, uh, to communicate with modern technology. And um, we want to also collaborate with the fire and uh, sheriff's department our fire department um, will give out free smoke detectors. They'll come install that for that senior citizen. A lot of the, a lot of those uh, our residents don't really realize that we have that program. So it's also going to be nice to promote that as well. And it's also when they sign up for this, we're also going to give a, a pamphlet booklet that's going to contain some useful information. And we got some basically. I'm going to, the next slide is going to have some examples of what that's going to look like. But at least wanted to describe that first now. So the resource guide they'll get. We'll have contact information for local information it, it would, for the city building, our library, our food pantry. We wanted to put pictures with that as well because sometimes when the senior citizens are driving, they can't see small addresses. But if they know what that building looks like visually, that might help them a long way as well. We're also going to have an emergency contact guide in there that has all the information for the Clark County Sheriff's Office, our fire and EMS, Clark County Community. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, combined health district, and also a list of their elected officials for easy contact with the possibility of assigning a city council liaison. So as we further discuss that with council, we'll, we'll solidify that. But also part of this is joining the network of uh, AARP network of age-friendly communities. And that will help us uh, assess, develop, and implement plans that will assist our older residents. There's actually a resolution tonight in front of council for us to do that. Once we join that network, we'll have some time, about three to five years, to develop a plan and basically say, this is what we're gonna to do to help our, our, our aging citizens. With, I would like to note, though, this AARP does not limit itself to senior citizens for the development of planning stuff. It is all ages included. That's why it's age-friendly community. But you can get grants to put in sidewalks. You can get grants to put in crosswalks. And that's what we're gonna shoot for. So right now, my mission is to get us a non-signalized crosswalk going from Mayor's Court over to Sugar Cell been much needed in years past but since our foot traffic has definitely increased and now we have mayor's court there it's definitely going to be warranted so how can we as a community use the aarp to get grant money to cut the cost down for that project as well so this is what basically this is going to look like and this is not all of it it's a much bigger packet but we don't want to have a slideshow of 47 slides and you know no one wants that so basically this is going to be your first our first page past the title page i don't know if there it is and they're going to fill this out and it's everything from are you able to walk are you able to drive and should your electricity go out do you need do you need do you need generator do you need something to keep your electricity on because you're on oxygen or something so once they fill this in we're going to have an understanding of what what resident is where and then what kind of help they need and of course part of this is going to have what's your contact information on here for your nearest relative that we can call on your behalf and here's this resource list i told you about that has the pictures on it and green yeah there's more than here on this we just wanted to give an example um, these right here are all going to be active links so they can click on that should they see the online version so it'll be easier for them to follow but again we just wanted to stress the visuals of the buildings is very important again so the senior citizen they may not be able to see that 331 but they'll definitely recognize that old school sign so this is another thing too in case you missed it our facts fa our facts facts so here's your free smoke detectors some other pertinent information uh, we also want some information there about the Rumpke Senior Car Service. That's, that's a big, big, big thing that we have called them all the time. If I'm a senior, do I need to have the trash service? If you live in a single family or double family home, you do. We did negotiate a senior rate, so 
Uh, you can qualify if you're 55 and up to get reduced freight. That is a 35 gallon cart for recycling uh, and trash. Right now it's 12.35 a month. Those go up every year, uh, but it's still significantly cheaper than what it's been in the past. And again, here's our emergency contact form for the city. So if it's an emergency, please dial 911. Should you have any other uh, minor issues, you can call one of these numbers as well. Aqua Fitness at the New Carlisle Pool. So this is something too we want to start heavily promoting. So if you are a resident or a non-resident, you can pay a $5 fee, but on Wednesday morning and Saturday mornings, we have a water aerobic. So please come and visit this. There's only one slide on this, so it's not really a lot of information to go through. But again, we're very excited to get this going, get our citizens back and engaged, get them in that water. We're really use our pool for what it's worth. This has been a very cheap project to go on. Really all we had to buy was the water weights. Uh, the, the instructor is, her name is Jackie. She's very experienced. She also teaches the same class at Huber Eyes Aquatic Center and the New Carlisle Sports and Fitness Center. But again, please, once we start, we already promoted it. We're going to start hitting the, the fast track of promo so we get people in there. But please pass along. It is such a great workout, low impact workout if you need to have a low impact workout. Please come take advantage of this particular program. This is the most requested improvement we have gotten. So we started doing utility bill newsletters. I want to say year, two years ago, and it goes in with your water bill, your utility bill, and it's really one page front and back. Well, through the years, what we've noticed that every every quarter, it basically becomes the same thing. We know one issue is going to focus on lemon brush pickup, one issue is going to focus on the pool, et cetera, et cetera, just because it's one page front and back, so only get so much in there. So we really want to really expand that newsletter. Most cities have a multi-page, six to eight page newsletter they give out quarterly. Uh, a lot of local schools districts do it. It is a very common practice. So we do want to bring that into here. Well, what is that going to look like? Well, it's blatantly city, city news. So we want any department news can have in there. Business spotlights, we can do employee spotlights, citizen spotlights. We have groups of the community garden that's great work for us in town here. So we can spotlight nonprofit groups as well. But it's a way to sit there and say, hey, this is what's really going on in your community. And it also gives us an opportunity to really expand on those services. We're very rushed and very limited on the side of our current newsletter. So we can't really detail all the stuff we want to detail. This is going to alleviate all that. Um, we will determine what is included in each newsletter. We will hire out for design development and mailing of the newsletter. And it will replace that utility bill newsletter. We'll still have an option for that, so special comes up. But in, once we start the, the six to eight pager, we're going to get rid of that utility bill, that bill newsletter. And that's going to have some cost, of steep, cost reduction associated with it as well, just because we're not paying for the extra stuff to go out with that utility bill. So this will definitely uh, greatly improve the communication between the city and its residents. It is expected to be around $13,000 to $16,000 a year on that. Again, that's per quarter. And basically, one to give you an example, We've looked at a lot of different cities. West Carrollton does a great job. Um, it's basically something like this. And again, this is there's more pages to it. We just want to have, have a, a very long PowerPoint presentation. So we really streamline what's in there. They usually always stands from a note from a mayor or a note from a council member. Then basically some summer events. And yeah, they focus on their pool and their city services. And then the, the other stuff they'll have, you know, like news from the fire department and news from the planning department or uh, what grants they had got that quarter or something like that. So you really have an opportunity to really, really promote the great things that we do here at the city administration level that we just we just don't see because we don't have enough room on that newsletter to really put it out. And that is it. I have any questions, I will be happy to entertain them. Okay, thank you. So my other question, how were the acoustics in here? This is our first meeting of the year. Was it okay to keep here? Good? Good? Awesome. I'm sorry. Did you hear okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine. So definitely any questions or comments on any of those programs, I'm definitely happy to entertain. So you're done. I'm good. All right. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, then. Uh, that was an awesome presentation you did there. Uh, Thank you. Mr. I appreciate Rick. it. And kudos to Mrs. Irley, oh, Irley, <laughs> get my tongue then tied here, uh, for her creative uh, artwork. 
I know she found it on the internet somewhere, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, it, it was very nice. Thank you. April's just been a great addition to our city. She's so passionate about the city and its residents. It's, it's really come to show. So again, April, thank you for coming aboard. Okay, moving right along. I don't think we have any committee reports that I'm aware of. If not, we'll go with uh, comments from members of the public. Please state your name, go to the podium, and you'll have five minutes. I forgot to set the paper up there. If you want to come grab this, yeah. Thank you. I think I have most of them memorized. I need the pen though. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, um, just on the, on the, on the whole conversation of chickens, I know that, you know, I don't know where everybody stands on it, but I know that it was kind of brought together with Ms. Wright and Mr. Bond. So, just you know, a couple of things. Is I can appreciate anybody that wants to learn about farm animals and agriculture and things of that nature. My, my daughter did it through FFH. She raised cows and things like that. So I understand and can appreciate the, some of those aspects. Um, I know many of you mentioned a couple of times you want to give people the rights to, to do things on their own property and things of that nature. Um, and I understand that to a, a point. But when you move into a city, a municipality. I can't speak verbally, but I move or live in a city because I want to live by uh, certain types of you know guidelines and rules. I don't want to live next to a guy who's got a race car and who's starting at you know midnight revving it up, fixing it, or farm animals making noise, or you know, you know just all the mess that comes with the chickens like this. Some of those letters were referred to. Um, we also know that our code enforcement got a hard job as it is, and. They can't even keep up with that. I don't think that we should add a whole other level of something we've never dealt with before. Uh, that they're going to have to deal with. I mean, we all see it day in and day out with, uh, you know, on, on social media, dogs loose here, there, everywhere. Uh, I think if, if everybody was going to take care of the animal, like you know, some people do with their animals. I know that you're great with taking care of animals, and, and many of us are. But you know, we also know that there's probably the majority of people that don't take care of the animals the way that they should. And that is a pattern that is kind of common with New Carolina. And I don't see that pattern changing with the chicken. I know a couple of years back there was a time where there was a post uh, of, of chickens loose over on, I think, the spinning. And we're not even allowed to have them in town. I mean, we all know that there's already chickens in town here and there. People are keeping them low key. Uh, but you know, that was. That was, you know, some that were loose when we're not even supposed to have them. So, um, you know, I think if um, you think about it, it's just not the smart time to do it as well. We have two new housing developments that are going to be coming in. I don't think that's precedence. Precedence you want to set. You know, when you're trying to sell a three hundred thousand dollar house or higher, I, I just that would turn me off to say, well, they allow chicken. Well, I might build this three hundred fifty thousand dollar house. Now I'm going to have chicken with, with you know, feces and possible rats and coyotes, especially once they start tearing down some of, the, some of those fields. It's, it's going to bring them in. You've got to be honest. Um, I know that there are pros to raising your own you know, chickens and eggs and things of that nature, um, but I think the, the cons far outweigh at this moment in a while. It's just it's not the time. It's, it's a bad timing with the housing developments. And um, you know, like I said, our, our planning guys, Code enforcement guys are already overworked, not enough hours to get the job done. I don't think adding another layer like this to it is going to be a responsible, responsible move for the city. Uh, it's, it's just going to add cost that you know many, most of us, you guys have done a good job of, of keeping spending at a reasonable level, and this is one of those things where you don't really need to spend that much money. So, so that's, that's all I got. Anyone else? Uh, 
and Road Law. 1014 West Lake Avenue. Um, this, this proposal is, is, it's not a good direction for the city. Um, I sat where you guys sat for four years, um, and, and I understand a few of you think, well, you know, um, I want my freedoms, but when, you, like Mr. Lowry said, when you move to a city, you give up some alienating rights. You know, um, it's almost like an HOA. You know, when I buy a house in a, in a new community and as an HOA, I know what my my responsibilities are. Um, if you do this, you open Pandora's box. It doesn't stop with chickens. I, I'll, I'll let you guys know that. You can just drive five miles up the road, drive up to Parkland, where they're allowed to have chickens. And you go there, and guess what's there now? There's goats. And there's going to be some other farmhouses coming. So it's not going to stop at chickens. I promise you that they're going to press, press, press the issue. They're going to try to take that next step. Like Mr. Lowry said, we, we, a lot of you were on council with me, put a lot of time and effort to get two developments to come into the city that we desperately need financially. And the last thing we need is for us to turn away potential high-earned buyers building $300,000 plus homes that they don't want to live there. And you can't regulate, you can't say, well, you have to have a certain size lot. We know that that can't be enforced. We know code enforcement can't handle what they have now. Um, you add another layer onto it, it's, 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 it's not good. It's, it's just not a good idea. It's not. There's several <coughs> opportunities outside with 4-H, FFA, um, other agricultural, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Just opportunities. If, if you have a child or a young adult that wants to learn, there's opportunities out there. It doesn't need to be in their backyard, which turns into my backyard and turns into your backyard. And like Mr. Lyra said, once we start moving dirt, there's there's coyotes, there's foxes. They're going to have they're going to have to go somewhere, and they're going to have to go find a food source. And chickens are a food source. And then when the chickens run out, that means someone's dog is going to be a food source. Someone's cat. God forbid, someone's little two-year-old is playing in the backyard. Is that really what you guys want to happen over some chickens? And I hate to break the news to you guys: eggs aren't that expensive. Where you're going to be able to raise enough chickens to offset the cost of eggs. And they're just not. I buy 18, 18 eggs a week and it's two dollars and seventy nine cents. You know, you can't raise chickens for doing two dollars and seventy nine cents to produce eighteen eggs. You just can't do it. Um, like the letter said, the, the pros outweigh the cons. The disease that, that could and possibly would come into the community that's this tight and this close that would spread quite rapidly. It just it's it's just not a good idea. I mean, it's not a good look for the city. Not when there's other avenues and opportunities that these folks can take outside of raising chickens on their own. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rudderwald. Mine's going to be short and sweet. Richard Carnes, 514 Lynn Avenue. I just want to reiterate that uh, I'm against it, and you guys heard the letters that were in your communication. I mean, it says it all. These are one of them, you know, has a horticultural degree, an agricultural degree, uh, animal husbandry, you know, disease. I mean, if you've seen the news with the bird flu, we don't want that in our town. It's, it just doesn't make any sense to me at all. This is a town. That should be enough. That's right there. It's not country is not the right place for chickens. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Well, yeah, young lady. Never, never been here before, never done this before, so um, my name is Jackie. I live at 105 North Church Street. And sorry, I feel like I'm the only one here that's pro chickens. I, <laughs> I so I wanted to address some of the 
the negatives first, the diseases. Dogs carry diseases, cats carry diseases. I raise rabbits currently in town, it's legal. They carry diseases. Uh, reptiles, exotics are legal here in town. They also carry diseases. What helps is veterinary preventative care that we all, as responsible owners, most of us, provide for our animals. So the cool thing about chickens is you don't actually have to take them to a vet to get that preventative care. Most of the preventative care against uh, things like worms or diseases are available over the counter at places like Tractor Supply, Rural King, any other farm stores. These things are readily available for people. Um, when it comes to waste, I also have garden beds. I, uh, right on North Church Street, like right here in the middle of town. Garden beds. Chickens make compost for garden beds. It can be composted. That's a way to utilize it. And if not, there are ways to dispose of it in a healthy manner. You're not going to let it pile up in your yard and you know, I'm not stupid. There are definitely people in here or people in town that aren't responsible with their animals, but I don't think it's my worry. Everybody on my street has an animal, and at least the ones on my street where I'm at take care of them properly. Um, when it comes to wildlife, wildlife, it's already here. Like so many of you have said, with the the building developments coming in, all of those wild animals are coming to town. When you think whether we have chickens or not, it's going to stop them. They're coming anyway. And our responsibility as a community is to have ways of preventing them from getting to our animals. My rabbits live outside. They're in cages where they're protected. They're off the ground where they're protected. As a responsible animal owner, I take measures to keep my animals safe from wildlife and from stray dogs and from stray cats, from the people who aren't resp responsible. I just believe that we should have that, that freedom of choice, the freedom of food autonomy. Um, I, when you mentioned the, the cost of eggs and that you can't offset that with only chickens, and I believe that you can because so much of your food waste the scraps that you make in your chicken in your kitchen can be fed to chickens. You don't always have to buy them the pellets, and it reduces waste in our garbage because they have that outlet to turn that waste into food, into eggs. And I feel like we should have that freedom of choice to have that opportunity. And my kids are in 4-H, and they don't have the opportunity to show chickens because we don't have anyone to keep them here. And we would like that opportunity. And if you just put your first and last name, um, I got your address already. I just really need your last name, basically. Thank you. fear about anything, you ought to have fear about your food chain, your food supply. Our food chain is very fragile, and what we do at the farmer's market every year is just talk to people about eating healthy, because food is medicine, especially food that you grow. But Jackie's points were spot on. You've got disease and other animals, you've got ways to take care of chickens. So I don't think you can put all your fears on six chickens in a backyard. Um, as if they're going to draw in mongrels that are losing their food. You ought to be concerned about the development around your town, yes. And maybe there's something else that needs done. Um, but, you know, the reality is people are really concerned about their food supply. And if you haven't seen the movie documentary that was all science about Kiss the Ground or the new one that's out called Common Ground, which is about regenerative agriculture, which is using the animals like chickens and cattle in larger operations to, to regenerate the soil that then grows healthier food. So I believe that's what people are concerned about. I think all the fear mongering and the comments about attacking children, um, that's kind of crazy. But what you ought to be concerned about is your food supply. Where is your food coming from? Most of those eggs you buy in the store are raised from chickens who are confined in, in a space this big 
And if you don't think they're full of hormones and antibiotics and what you're putting into your body, you ought to be concerned about that. The, the feedlots for the, the beef in this, in this country, those are terrible conditions for animals to live. And the meat you buy uh, from those feedlots is really not good for you. So, I mean, if you're really concerned about with fear, look into those issues and know that the bigger issue is having quality food that either you can grow or buy from a farmer that you trust and maybe having the ability to plant a few potatoes and some garlic and have a few chickens in your backyard. Because chickens will always give you eggs if you're raising um, egg producers. Or you could have six chickens for a couple of months that you then slaughter and have high quality uh, meat. So it's an opportunity for the city. Huber Heights is the most successful uh, rural, I mean, um, development, in, I think, in Ohio. And they allow chickens. That started, you know, back in the 60s, that development. Well, now it's expanding. It's going to take over our borders. So be concerned about that as well. But what Huber Heights does, and you just pointed to some other organizations that have um, documents that you're sort of using the wording from them. Um, and uh, so we have a lot to learn. Huber Heights allows chickens. We bought eight, nine eggs today from one of our farmers who lives in Huber Heights. And he's been raising his chickens just for the last couple of months. But it clearly is an issue. And yes, we're growing as a community. We'll have new people here. But having a few chickens in town is not going to keep people from buying property. Thank you, Pat. Anyone else? <coughs> uh, David Peter, 1685, Addison, New Road, Councilman Law, Councilwoman Wright. I don't know if it came from uh, compassion for animals, uh, freedom loving, or uh, wanting to be self sustainable. And I love all those things as well. Uh, I actually had thyroid cancer um, previously and survived it. And I think it was largely due to contaminated food uh, for me and my mom. But that aside, uh, I just have a couple concerns. A couple people brought up slaughtering chickens and eating them for meat, uh, but I saw in the, in the proposal that we wouldn't be able to slaughter them. So I wonder uh, how that's going to occur. And then where I work in Cincinnati and a lot of communities around us, there's something called an animal unit. And if you have at least one acre, you get one animal unit. And an animal unit is six chickens. Four turkeys, half a horse, so you'd need two acres, <laughs> half a cow, one hog, or two sheep. So the question that that immediately went to my mind when I read this is, what's why can't I have four turkeys? Why can't I have a hog or two sheep? And those will be questions you start getting if you approve this. Whether you're animal loving, compassionate, or want to be self sustainable, most of those animals are going to help you do so. So why can't I have a hog on the property? If you're ready to face down that question, approve it. If you're not, we may want to think about this a little bit. Um, if you are if you have less than one acre where I work in other places in Cincinnati, you can't have any chickens. So my question at first was, well, if you have five, six of an acre, you can't have five chickens instead of six. And I was advised by many people, no. Um, if you have under an acre, it's a horrible idea to have chickens. So based on what some other people said, based on some of the science, I could see it going either way. But the other question I have, and this is the real reason I chose to speak, is it says in the uh, proposal that um, if you have less than an acre, you can have six chickens. I'm one of maybe a handful of properties in town in the city that have more than an acre, and I don't think it addresses a limit on those properties. So I'm at 1.13 acres, but I have 60 chickens. Uh, I know it's not very many properties, but we may want to add some sort of limit where I work, it's up to five animals. So you have five acres, you could have essentially 30 chickens. So the main questions are that, what is the limit? And also, what is stopping people from saying, I want a pig on my quarter acre property, blinking around on that? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Honestly. <laughs> and then I wanted to bring up the amount of stray cats that are in our neighborhood. 
the smell of urine is horrible. <laughs> I hate the amount of stray cats that we have. And then, well, with the stray cats, going back to that letter, they keep down the room population. I've seen multiple times where they brought us dead, dead mice. <laughs> Just control it. And then, about the bird flu. That's going to affect us whether we have our own chicken or not. Because there's still wild ducks, wild geese that fly around everywhere. We don't know where they're going. You don't know what they'll spread. That's something else to think about. <laughs> and then they control the pest population. Which, that's something else that we don't know. <laughs> the less bugs. <laughs> I brought, I printed this off from the CDC. They explain how you can keep chickens safely. It's for whoever wants to. One of the diseases I looked into was salmonella. That's something that chickens can carry. So I have a list of things that have also carried salmonella that we bought at the store. So there's no way around that either. <laughs> like basil, cantaloupes, onions, raw cookie dough, which everyone knows that, but we still eat it. Flour, fish, peanut butter, that goes on for quite a while. <laughs> I just think you should consider it. present to you some of the same data as before as I prefer to go by meta-analysis studies which is the highest form of scientific studies it is beyond peer-reviewed studies and I present to you scientific data for things. A 2010 Cambridge University study demonstrated that pasture-raised chickens from chickens given space to pet for food are more nutritious than industry-sourced eggs with pasture-raised eggs containing twice as much vitamin E and long-chain omega-3 fatty acids. With certified organic chicken feed available, you can keep your chickens healthy while supporting sustainable farming and supporting your family's health. The National Institutes of Health, this is a meta-analysis study, presents a conclusion. A systematic review on the contribution of village chicken products and sustainable healthy food systems for children along rural urban gradient, which is us, was performed following the preferred reporting <coughs> items for systemic reviews and meta-analysis. The conclusion is better nutritious in content who can, in children who can get eggs from their backyard. UC Veterinarian Medicine, which is a prestigious veterinarian school says by helping villages in other parts of the world maintain healthier poultry flocks we're assisting communities as a whole if families can increase egg and meat production in their chickens because they are healthier they have more financial resources to spend on health care and sending their children to school while we do not have to pay for our children to go to school beyond our taxes we do know that with as expensive as groceries are with it at least a 21% increase, up to 54% increase, depending on what you are buying at the grocery store, that having eggs in your backyard can help with hunger here in our own community, which is actually a problem. That is why we have so many food pantries in such a small community. As for the question of how much space do chickens need, scientifically, chickens only need 10 square feet of space each per minute. An acre is 43,650 square feet. So you can have as many as five chickens, if that is a question that is in your mind. Also, people are asking you if you can have hogs. We're not asking for that. 
obviously a hog does need a couple acres of land and people aren't looking to start small farms in their teeny tiny backyards in the city of New Carlisle. They're asking for chickens to help feed and sustain their family. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Gary Ann. Can I ask a question? You had your data as 2010. Do you have any more relevant data? So the basis of research is that you don't use data anywhere older than 8 to 10 years old. So that is, the Cambridge study was 2010. Okay. The NIH study was more recent. Recent, okay. Thank you. And great great information. I just want to know the dates. But again, you have, you wrote down my email prior. Mm -hmm. I can send you probably 10 or more articles in the recent. Oh, and you're good. I was just curious about the dates of the other ones. That's all. It was good information. Thank you. What? Oh yeah, just I'll get your name in. Okay, Debbie Mitzi. Will you spell your last name for me? M-E-N-S-I. One two zero five Avenue. And you said Debbie, right? Uh huh. Okay, thanks. So I understand what they're saying, but if you want chickens and you want whatever, go to a farm, buy a farm. This is a city. I don't want chickens near me. I understand that that's a good way to have you know, fresh farms, but go go rent space from a farmer or something. I'm sure he'd let you do that. But my vote is no. Thank you. Mike, you had an additional comment. Since I didn't hit my five minutes, can I say one more thing? Does anybody else have anything? Go ahead, sir. Drive. I've been in this town since I was six, five, six years old. And I'm 70 now. And I do not want no chickens in my town. I've got a right to myself not to have chickens in this town. I got rights. So we're disgusting. We got new towns coming up, new at the city coming up, you know, the housing and everything, it's going to be worse. I've got animals coming out of the, you know, sewers now. It's going to get a lot worse. Their families coming out of them sewers. I don't want any more of it. Thank you. What was your last sure. name, sir? Bruce Wanick. Can you spell that for me? W-E-N-E-C-K. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, Mike, I'm going to give you another five. I'm going to be short and quick because I just hit my five. <coughs> so, yes, there's, there's animals and there's rats and there's pests and rodents that are already coming in. <coughs> but there's going to be more rats follow chickens. In other words, it's a new talk to a farmer. Aaron Mighty has many chickens. I'm going to take his word um, on it. Um, but quick question. Mr. Wright and Mr. Vaughn, you guys currently have take care of, feed, or deal with any chicken within the city of New Carolina? No. Okay. So but, uh, and I'll ask you if you want to let the city managers answer it. Is it worth the gamble that what the work that this council and many other councils have worked to get these developments and these restaurants to possibly cause a problem not with these developments not going full, you know, full board? Again, I mean, I already mentioned it, but $300,000 houses. Is this worth a gamble to possibly steer people away from something that we've worked so hard for, you've worked so hard for over the years uh, to in in response to your question, Mike, I think that will the answer will be borne out in the vote. Yes, Mr. Bond. My only comment to that, I, I understand the question, is uh, I forget who it was, one of the women that that spoke. That point has not stopped Huber from growing. 
it hasn't stopped any of the other larger you know cities from growing so i don't i don't know i mean it's all speculation so nobody can see in here i don't think and have a crystal ball and say yes that one issue is going to keep people from buying a house it might i don't know um but i just know from looking at the other communities that already allow this they're growing so i don't think that's a, a hindrance to them that i can see i don't know just one touch but keep in mind on most posts about the city everybody says they don't want to get your rights so that's a perfect example mr Woodall. quick thing about that uh human rights growing it's not human rights it's tip city addresses carriage trail does not allow changes so those 7500 new homes they built in the last eight years not a lot of changes all it's only on the, none of that is yeah, I, I, I think tip city allows chickens no, they don't. No, they i think i think troy does troy does not either you have more than one acre one acre one acre troy okay so if you have more than one because there's one acre yeah there's um, there's most places if you have one acre you can have yeah that's yeah. City of Dayton, and Columbus. Yeah, Columbus, I know, has all great models that we want to meet, right? We don't want it. There's a difference between emotional arguments. Thank you, Mr. Rudolph. Just let you guys know, Harris Trails is not part of the rights. Harris Trails is not allowed to Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Mr. Lindsay. The, uh, the, you need to get the meeting under control. Uh, there have been some talk tonight about the new developments that this council and previous councils has worked hard to do. Uh, Mr. Lowry was part of, part of the uh, one. These new developments coming in here will be HOAs. They will have to follow their HOA guidelines and the HOA will not allow the new developments to have chickens. I know of no HOA pretty much in the country that allows that. I know quite a few people in various states that are on the HOA, HOA boards. They're the presidents or whatever they call them. And none of them allows chicken in the HOAs. So I don't believe these two new developments uh, will allow it either or as having an ordinance that says they can have chickens in the city, their HOA takes precedent and they sign off on that before they buy the house or when they buy the house. So I just wanted to point out to the community that and the people here that those developments will be HOAs and nobody else had mentioned that. So I think it's, it's fair to see both sides of the coin. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ms. Lindsay. If no one else has anything more from the audience, we shall go ahead for the resolutions. All right. Tonight we have two resolutions. We have resolution 2024-06, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution accepting an H2O Ohio grant for the purpose of purchasing equipment needed for the city's drinking water distribution system. Do I have a motion? So much. Give me one second to get to that section. I'm sorry, gentlemen. Oh. Do a motion on the floor. Are there motions on the floor? Yeah. So an explanation of this resolution, um, Mr. Kiko was able to get and uh, going to what we're, we'll be applying for. A grant for public water systems. Um, it'd be a H2O grant for ten thousand um, dollars. It's for the water distribution drinking system. <coughs> no match from the city. Mr. Mayor, go ahead, Bill. Uh, what's the money going to be used for besides the water system? I mean, is it going to be <clears throat> to replace lines or update equipment or? Um, as stated on the application on page four here, it is for a mobile 200 leak kit and a imp simper impulsive kit to mon and monitoring setup fee. So it's equipment. 
okay. for us to use. But yeah. great question for the audience. I, yeah, and that's why I asked it because sure. yes, we know what that money is going to be spent on, but the the audience and people in internet land uh, may not have a clue what that uh, what we was talking about. So, I, so I asked the yep. question. Thank you, sir. If I can add to that, the total project cost is twelve thousand seven hundred. Will we get a grant for ten of that? Any further discussion? So then it would cost us twenty seven hundred. Is what you're saying, sir? Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. But it's not a match to the grant. It's just right. additional. Right. Yep. With no further discussion. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. That passes 7 0. We have resolution 2024 7 R, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution to seek membership in the AARP network of age-friendly communities. So moved. Sorry. Second. Chris. Chris. Sammy. All right. I'm getting there. Sorry, that was a long one. My board had a lot of attachments to it. All right, so we have a motion on the floor? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so explanation of this ordinance, this was what we discussed on that senior citizen joining the AARP uh, Association of Age-Friendly Communities. Um, so there's a little data there about how residents age and uh, what percentage we're going to be. Uh, but basically, for us to be part of this network, it does have to go through the legislative process. And once that legislative process is approved, our mayor will sign off on that membership. So this is just one step in that hurdle. Any further discussion? Go ahead, Bill. Uh, well, I was just curious if AMAC has any uh, anything like this. Who? American, uh, see, American Mature. I can't think the, it's just called AMAC. I forget what the act is. Yeah, I can look into so, but uh, it, It's the same thing as, it's not the same thing. It's similar to ARP. Mm-hmm except for it's it's a different organization and i was just wondering if, if they have anything like that or i have no idea i've never heard of that organization you mentioned okay. i'll send you some information oh please do yeah we aarp is pretty recognizable so yeah yeah so we went with them but that's a good question definitely we look into it you can email me some information okay thank yeah. you sir that's yeah, all no problem thank you any of course. further discussion councilwoman wright yes councilman Lindsay. yes Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. <coughs> Councilman Bond? Yes. <coughs> Councilman Shannon? Yes. That's the 7 0. Man. And I guess moving on to the ordinances. All right, our ordinances. Tonight we have one intro and five action. Ordinance 2024 21, introduced on May 6th, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance amending Chapter 1066 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle, Ohio, to revise cemetery fees. So, uh, explanation of the, are we good to go? Lindsay Shammy. Right. Yep. You good? Good. Okay. Explanation of this ordinance. This is actually to be voted on at the last meeting, uh, although council members did want to take a look at Exhibit A and reduce the infant grave to 150, from 150 to 50. And I do believe we increased, and that's for resident, increased the non-resident from 150 to 200. Um, is there any other changes we made on that? I think that was about it. Um, and then the overall, we'll actually look at our cemetery rates. Um, we need to increase those um, to start really just putting some back for our capital improvements and um, some wages at our cemetery. Um, it's getting to the point to where it needs some love. And um, in order for us to do that, we do need to raise those rates a little bit uh, just to make it a little bit more soothing and uncommon environment for those who come visit their loved ones who have, who have passed. Any discussion? If not. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. That's 7 0. Moving on to Ordinance 2024 22, introduced on May 20th, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance. 
Amending section 1460.44 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding accessory uses for recreational vehicles and equipment and overnight parking. So moved. Second. I was reading. <laughs> Do you yeah, want to give the explanation because your name's on Chris. Uh, I, uh, I brought this ordinance forward. Uh, the only change from about a month ago I brought it forward mm -hmm. and council did not like uh, one of the uh, uh, parking things. So that has been removed. Basically what this ordinance does, if you have an RV, and I used to have one, so I know a little bit about them. The, uh, if you're getting ready to take it out in the beginning of the year, uh, the spring, summer, whatever, the, you can park it in your yard according to the current ordinance for 72 hours. After that, if you don't have it cleaned or stocked or whatever, because you're uh, working or whatever the case may be, you can get a second 72 hours for that. And all you have to do is notify the city that the RV will be sitting there an additional 72 hours. It will also allow you to hook up electric uh, via your shoreline to the trailer and water for cleaning and whatnot inside the RV. And it also, at the end of the season, when you're cleaning it all out, you still are allowed to have the water and the electric to, to use it. Uh, the, the parking services will uh, was not changed. It still uh, requires asphalt, cement, crushed limestone. And one thing that was added to it uh, that I, I uh, wanted into it, that no visible grass or weeds are permitted to grow underneath the unit, the RV or equipment parked or stored on private property. So the, uh, if they have one and it, it's not in the driveway, then the code enforcement officers can, can make them uh, do something with that weed, spray weed killer or whatever. Uh, and that's pretty much the sum of the ordinance. I'm looking to see if there's... Uh, another thing that was taken out on, uh, at one point, the current ordinance says a conditional use permit may be granted by the planning board. Well, they only meet certain times of the year and the camping season could be over before the planning board ever heard it. I wanted that struck from it. And, uh, and one other thing that I've already hit out the additional 72 hours. The original uh, ordinance says time limits may be extended by the city manager due to special circumstances upon written request. I wanted that removed and not more than twice per calendar year up to an additional 72 hours consecutive with the first 72 hour period. Shall be permitted as long as the city is notified in writing in advance of such extended time. So, you know, in your 70th hour, if you think you, you're not done, you need more time, you call the city building, you go up there and tell them, give them a letter or a piece of paper that you need it another 72 hours, but it's gonna be there another 72 hours. And it basically, you have that right to do that. Mr. Bridge, have you got any comments? No. Any further discussion? Vice Mayor Eggleston. No. Mayor Cook. No. Councilman Grimm. No. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. That passes four to three. That was 22, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Ordinance 24. 24-24. Introduced on May 20th, public hearing and action tonight, an ordinance supplementing certain appropriations contained in New Carlisle City Ordinance 2023-61. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, explanation of this ordinance. Uh, got a full house, we'll explain it. So every year we, uh, we, we develop a budget and we give it to council and the council approves that budget. Once we have that budget set for the year, we have to operate within those fund balances. 
Well, as we know, unexpected occurrences do occur throughout the year. So sometimes we have to do what we call supplemental. And that's just saying, hey, we wanted to spend $20, but now we need to spend 30. Then we have to give a copy of that to the auditor and it goes up to the state of Ohio. So that's what we have in front of council tonight. It's an ordinance cert supplementing certain appropriations. Um, and these basically have to do with additional improvements and some projects we'd like to get done. Any further discussion? Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. That passes 7 0. Ordinance 2024-25, this was introduced on May 20th, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance amending section 618.15 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding animal enclosures. And this, just to note, this has to pass an order for the following one so moved. to work. Second. And I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Um, since this has a, a council member um, ordinance, either council member Wright or councilman Bond will need to explain this ordinance. Sure. This is just adding the verbiage for how the uh, hens would need to be contained in a yard if somebody chooses to have uh, female chickens. Um, so it just states. Ex it has the same verbiage and that it just excludes out and says except for female chickens that is otherwise permitted under chapter 618. So it just allows for them to have an enclosure and kept in a yard. Anyone else have anything? I guess I just want to say that it is always going to be a fenced in enclosure and with the top to protect the chickens or the hens from predators and that's always a good idea. And that's what okay, I'm going to speak to this issue. I guess having been around this town a little bit longer than that gentleman, <laughs> I know we go back a long way. We had chickens back when I was growing up many, many years ago. However, in noticing some of the people in this city that have let's say for example dogs and have never seemed to went out and removed the dog feces from the backyards I know of one neighbor that does that there are other neighbors with as high as three dogs that don't remove them in my estimation, we have given the people the right for an animal. They have chosen not to take care of that animal. And I'll be honest with you, I think we're going to have the same situation with the chickens. With that, if nobody else got anything, Mr. Hey. Burner. Vice Mayor Eggleston? No. Mayor Cook? No. Councilman Grimm? No. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? I hate being loud. Yes. Three. Moving on to 26, Ordinance 2024-26. Introduced on May 20th, public hearing and action tonight, an ordinance amending Chapter 618 of the codified <laughs> ordinances for the purpose of permitting the keeping of chickens at residential properties within city limits. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. So explanation for this ordinance, we need to again come from Councilman Wright or Councilman Bond since they named their ordinance. 
I'll do this one. Um, this is to allow people to have hens to eat their own eggs, not to slaughter in their backyard. There are slaughtering houses up north of Troy and a little bit south of us that you could always stick your hens to. We don't want anybody to see anything like that. Mostly I, I feel the few citizens that will have hens will take very good care of them because they're not something everybody's going to want and it's not like we're saying you have to have hens and with them being in this pen they'll be out of your view you won't even know your neighbor has chickens hens aren't loud at all hens are not loud at all roosters are very loud um, that's pretty much all that it says is that we're allowing the citizens the right to have up to six chickens in their backyard. Any further discussion? Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? No. Mayor Cook? No. Councilman Grimm? No. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. That passes four to three. Moving on to Ordinance 2024-27. This is read only. Introduction tonight, public hearing and action on June 17th. An ordinance <clears throat> authorizing the city manager to execute a memorandum of understanding that amends the collective bargaining unit's job classification and wage table. And oh. that's just read only. Um, da, 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 da. Do we have other business? It just says open for discussion. Anybody have anything to bring up? Mr. Bridge. I don't have anything. Move to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to our adjournment. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. They even asked